Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition and welcome to March's Monthly Roundup. Hi everybody, welcome to Board Game Inquisition and this is the Monthly Roundup episode where I get to talk to you about all sorts of exciting things that have been happening in the past month. In particular, I like to talk about the new games I've acquired, um, maybe games I've traded for or sold or things like that. Um, I also like to talk about some of the most popular games I've been playing this month. There's something I've really, really enjoyed. And usually there's a very small portion that's a wish list at the end of this. Um, and the most important part of this is entire endeavour is hopefully that it's a little bit interactive. I really enjoy hearing about your games and what you've been playing um, and thank you to those who do actually fill that out in the comments. I just I find it so fascinating to see kind of what games you link together and I'm like well I like that one maybe I like that. So I think there's something really fun here about the element of sharing. Um, so I'm gonna do this suppose we, we have to start with a little bit of an intro spiel before we jump right into the games because March has been a bit of a crazy month. Um, it's a difficult one to talk about, isn't it? What's going on in the world right now? Um, and for me anyway, it's definitely quite scary. It's affecting a lot of people's lives. Um, you know, I've been in quarantine, well not in quarantine, but in lockdown. I've been inside my house for three weeks, I think it is now. Um, and of course, practicing social distancing. And I hope you at home are all safe and well. And most importantly, being smart. Like, don't do stupid things. Like, it's, it's, Pandemics are scary um, and I'm sure you know lots of people are going to be fine and stuff but there are so many other aspects to this and how the world gets affected that you really have to take some personal responsibility and make sure you're doing the right thing not just for you but for those around you. This is the kind of disease that forces you to think about people other than yourself. Um, and so I like I said I hope everyone's good you're taking care of yourself and using this as an opportunity perhaps to um, enjoy a bit of home time um, hopefully play some games that's why we're here after all um, and I'm not gonna lie I find it very hard to think about board games at the moment um, simply because there's so many big things going on in the world right now and board games just don't seem all that important um, but someone reminded me um, that you know it's times like now that you need games and nice things in your life more than ever so as they say the show must go on Okay, so let's start by jumping into the new arrivals this month. Um, there have been a couple which has been, you know, super pleasant, especially when you're stuck indoors. It's nice to have something arrive and, you know, be full of excitement. Um, and the first on this list is, yes, check on my list, Jaws. Um, so Jaws comes from um, Ravensburger and it's been producing a lot of um, IP content at the moment, right? So they have games like The Shining coming out, Back to the Future and Jaws. And initially I am very skeptical, 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 skeptical of um, games that are based on, you know, previously made content, you know, whether that be books or films, they just, they have a tendency to not recapture the world very well or the feel of it. And I just, they're often just pasted on or, you know, or maybe that's, maybe I'm being horribly cynical, but that's just been my experience with them so far. Apart from maybe Battlestar Galactica. And I haven't even watched the TV show, so. You know we'll leave that as it is. So Jaws left me a little skeptical um, but a lot of people seem to really like it. it um, you know feedback wise it, it seemed like a good thing um, and so my husband managed to buy a co copy of Jaws for a mighty $12 shipped from the States to here. Um, so we waited a while but Jaws got here and it is a one versus many game. So one of you gets to play the shark and everyone else gets to play like the, the townsman in the boat like Brody and things like that and hunt down the shark. Um, and then I instantly went, why did we buy this? Because we're terrible at one versus many games or anything really where you are 1v1. It's just, yeah, it's just bad. So I insisted on playing the shark. I was like, there's no way we we're playing Jaws and I don't get to try being the shark. And I thought maybe I would be could be evasive and sneaky for a bit and not get found out. Um, yeah, that didn't work really well because the first part, part of the game, it's actually played in two halves. Um, so the first part is set at the island on the beaches where you as the shark are eating swimmers um, and then the guys are out in the boat trying to track you down. And so they can't tell where you are on the map. You have like a piece of paper, you write down your location and you keep it hidden. And so the first turn, I thought I did something really smart actually. I went to a completely isolated part of the board um, and he moved two of his people and the second person he goes, oh, I'll scan here and see if there's a shark here. And sure enough, it was me. 
and I was just like oh god we've just started this is just gonna end badly so the second time I had to move I tried not to move at all um, and he straight up found me it was like the most depressing moment ever but to be fair I should be fairly familiar with these kind of terrible moments it, it always happens. So we get to the second phase um, and this time the shark is trying to attack the boat to kill the humans on it and the humans are trying to kill the shark. Um, but because I didn't do particularly well in the first phase it meant I'd left cards in the second phase. Um, and it, I found it kind of hard to navigate my way around. And of course, you know, he beat me and I was angry and annoyed because I was like, I just wanted to be a shark for five minutes. Just just five minutes would have been amazing. Um, but no, that's how 1v1 games, well, go around here. Now, despite all of this, Jaws is actually a very, very fun game and it's really thematic. I, I love the colours it uses and I love the fonts. It really feels like, see, I can't remember if Jaws is late 70s, early 80s, but it's got that vibe, right? There's something, you take one look at it and you go, ah, yes, it's that, it's that time period. And I think that's really cool. Um, I actually really enjoyed the mechanics. Now, they don't suit us particularly well, but, you know, this is still a, a pretty fantastic game. Um, and it was a very, very pleasant surprise. So that's the, that was the first thing that came to my house. Has anybody else picked up Jaws yet? Especially um, Americans, because it's, it's quite easy for you guys to get a copy. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback and see what you think. It was definitely a game that we need more than just, you know, me and him to play. But it's well worth keeping. Okay, so second on the list. Ah, uh, yes. So uh, this was last week's slight splurging. And the first of this is Tiny Towns. Um, so this is from AEG. And this is indeed a game about building, well, a tiny town. Um, and basically what it is, is it's... I thought, well, this is the bit I think that's most interesting is the fact so that you have a certain amount of buildings that you can create and you place like little 3D models of them down on a grid. You have a little mat to start with and you're trying to fit um, all of the pieces you need. It's kind of like Tetris, you know, um, down. And then when you complete it, you get to place the building so that, you know, those Tetris pieces don't take up a bunch of space. What's really interesting is, okay, the buildings are built out of, I think, four or five different materials. But how you get these materials is that you just announce which one you want at the start of your turn. So I'll say, I want stone. So that means everybody who's playing gets a stone. And you have to put it on your board. And then they'll go to your opponent's turn and they'll go, oh, maybe I, you know, I want glass. So then you have to get a glass, figure out where to put it and how to make it fit. I think that's the most interesting part of it. Um, it was kind of fun. I like goal oriented games very much. So it would say, you know, build a field and then for every field with a well next to it, the church would give you a bunch of points. So I was like, oh, right, I want loads of fields with wells and I'll fit all these churches in. Um, and it was a great plan originally, but was difficult to do. Um, my only issue with the game is the fact that you do call out those resources. One on one, it felt a little bit weird because it was obvious that let's say he was building a chapel. So I'm like, I may as well build a chapel if that's what he's going to call out, you know? Um, but there is another way of doing this and that's with a deck of cards. And and basically, so then, you know, it's random what resources come up and you get to choose what every third one is. So I'm looking forward to trying that a little bit more. Um, it's a highly like, oh, well, I don't want to say overproduced game, but it feels overproduced because everything's very, very fancy for what is essentially quite a simplistic game. But I had a lot of fun with it. So that was Tiny Towns. Okay, so the third game on my list is one that's been on my wish list for actually a really long time. It's one I've never talked about here because I, I didn't really know a lot about it, but I really liked how it looked. So I had it on our kind of for trade list so that if we just happened to pick up a copy, that'd be great. Um, and this is Sakaitsu from IDW Games. And it is, it's a game about birds. And we all know how popular birds are these days. We all do love a bit of bird games. Um, but what really intrigued me about this one is that your birds are on kind of like little discs, right? They, they for all the world, look like giant milk buttons. Um, and there's different colored birds and they have different colored flowers or wreaths around them. And the aim of the game is that you have this board and it has lines along it, right? So it's not a perfect, it's like a circle. So like you start with, let's say three disc spaces on each edge and then they get bigger as you go in till the middle one being the longest. And what you want to do is connect birds of the same color together and you have to place these discs next to each other. So that's pretty simple. So you play one blue bird, it's worth a point. You play another one next to it and you'll get two and so on and so forth. The interesting thing here is that the different colored wreaths around them really matter and that's for end game scoring. 
And how that works is that for the majority of a particular type of flora you have in one of those lines like I described is how you get points. And God, I, I really, really like this game. Um, I'm probably gonna, I'll talk about it a little bit later, I suppose, in games I've been playing. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed this. It, despite it being one versus one, because you can block each other's moves and things like that, you can play it that way. It doesn't feel um, aggressive or mean. And it doesn't feel like it's imbalanced either by kind of your player skills, because there's so little things to do on your turn. You're either playing a bird, or you're playing a bird <laughs> um, and you're just deciding where to put it I just I found it really really chill and enjoyable I'm a huge fan of it and I'll talk a, a little more about it later in the episode um, so that's the first of the bird games yes bird games there was more than one and this is the second one and I used to get this confused with Saikatsu all the time I kept thinking they were the same game for ages because they are both about birds and this is Peep Mats and this is from Lookout Spiele um, and peep mats is the German word for songbirds, I believe. Um, I hope, well, I hope so. Um, and this is also a game about collecting birds, but it's a card game and what's, it actually, it's really fascinating. I really like the mechanic of it. And um, it's been a long time since we've had like a fun little card game actually kind of resonate with us and be complex enough or interesting enough for us to continue play. So how this one works is that you have birds lining up at a bird feeder and you're trying to get as many seeds as possible. Now all of the birds have numbers on them. They look slightly like a deck of cards but not entirely and they come in pairs. They are male and females of each colour or type of bird. And what you're going to do is you're going to have a queue of birds at the bird feeder and you're going to need the number um, on the ones waiting to be fed to be higher than the bird that's already at the bird feeder and you get the difference basically in seeds um, and then the next highest bird goes up in the queue and you start it over again. Um, it's very 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 cool. Um, I love the fact that you can make combos, you can have tra chains of birds going in and out. Um, I like the fact that it matters if you can get pairs as well if, of male and female birds and also the scoring is fascinating so if you have more yellow birds than your opponent only you get to score yellow birds. Interesting, huh? So it really means you have to keep an eye on what your opponent is doing. You don't, also the birds that you place out at the bird feeder are everyone's birds, so anybody can score them at any time. Which leads to all sorts of kind of interesting moments, I'm gonna call it that. Um, definitely annoying moments of don't touch my bird. Um, but I really liked it. I found the minute I played it the first time I wanted to play it again now that I kind of fully understood it. Um, and it's it's fun and it's quick um, and I just love that there's quite a bit of thought in it. It's, it, it's not just kind of a throwaway cute bird game. Um, so that is Peep Mats. Yay! All of the birds, right? So many birds. Um, is that it from the list? It is indeed it from the list. So th those is, those is, um, so those are everything that I've picked up this month. I actually have two other things that I've bought secondhand but haven't arrived yet. But the way the post is working at the moment, no pressure, you know, we'll see if they turn up when they turn up. Um, um, so the only review copy I've had in the past month actually was Paris and that review is all done and dusted. Um, and that was a Kickstarter preview. Um, the fastest one I've ever made in my entire life. Yeah, the board game arrived here on Friday. Um, it was going up on Kickstarter on the Monday. Yeah, I know, my, my copy got lost in the post. Um, but that was interesting. I'm, it was a Keesling and Kramer title. If you haven't watched my review, you might want to. I'm very impressed with it considering the time frame. And I called it more of a first impressions because I had only, I, I, I played the game, you know, four or five times, but I still, it had been such a short time period that there wasn't really time to digest all that stuff. But I'm still, proud, I'm still proud of that review and I really like the video that went with it. So that was Paris. Um, so as you can imagine, review copies at the moment, I'm trying to wind things down a bit. I'd really, I'd really like a little bit of a break. I've been making at least one review a week for almost a year now. <laughs> Probably a little bit more. Um, and I'm, especially with everything that's going on at the moment, t times are a little bit stressful. Um, and I want to feel like I want to make more videos for things. I want to have the energy to do that. So I'm just, I'm going to kind of winding things down a little bit. Don't worry, there's still one more review in the works um, and you should be seeing that next week. And I'll see how I'm feeling in the meantime, you know, when the next content comes out. So I hope you guys will forgive me for that. But um, that's just how it rolls. Okay, so 
The next section on the list is going to be a very short section indeed and this is trades. Yeah, trades. I know people aren't sending stuff at the moment. We can't. It's a, it's a clever thing to do. Don't go out unnecessarily. All that kind of stuff. Um, but I do think we managed one trade this month. Yes, we did. Um, this was a short-lived trade and you'll see why in a minute. So we traded away our copy of Eclipse. We had a copy of the first edition that we traded for some time ago. Um, and we traded this for the new Kalis game, which is called Kalis with a number after it, 1303. So I'll start with Eclipse. Um, Eclipse is a, a space game or a big space game. Um, one entirely focused on cubes. <laughs> um, it wasn't what we expected out of the box when we started to play it. It really is a case of maneuvering cubes around using different abilities. Um, and it just didn't sit well with us. And I think that's partially because we played Zia Legends of a Drift System just before we played Eclipse. And I wonder if we had done it the other way around, what do we think of Eclipse more fondly? Um, but we just couldn't imagine us, you know, taking it out. So we, well, off it goes in the trade pile. And so in exchange, we got the new Kalis game. Um, I had never played the original Kalis, the one with the brooding man on the cover in the blue box. Um, and I'd always kind of heard good things. It's one of those games, you know, people talk about, one of the classics. And um, we should all be really serious about classics. Um, and I wanted to try it. Um, my husband really pushed this one. I think he was really interested in playing, in trying out Kalis. Because um, he'd played it before a really long time ago. And he was like, oh, I totally know what this is about. You know, we'll have fun with this. He was wrong, absolutely wrong. I, do you ever just know when you look at a board, a board game set up at the table and you're just like, nah, this, this is lit, no. Yeah, it was bad. I just saw it set up and I was like, is this all we do? Like, it's a worker place in the game and you put your guy out so you can get your stuff to make your things. That was pretty much it. There was nothing else to it. No extras, no hints. I was like, really I was literally a turn or two in and I was I was huffing is what I would call it I was just like I'm, I felt like I was missing something I was like there has to be something more to this no no there wasn't so I, I wrote it out for a couple of more rounds and then Brian went actually yeah you're right this is not very fun <laughs> so that was the end of Kalis um now I can see why people might like it I think it's definitely one that will be better with more players because you can be quite mean you can be vicious about it and cut people out of spots and stuff um, but that's just not my jam or his jam. I just, I don't want to waste my energy when I have time to play games with other people, being mean with them just because I can be. Um, you know, it just, it just didn't fit us. So it's now, by, it's now on the trade pile. It's like the trade that keeps on giving. Just continue on um, and whatnot. So that's my only trade for this month. Have you managed to achieve any yourself? Have you been any way lucky or fortunate in that regard? Um, please do let me know below and also, you know, do, do tell me what games you might have picked up. Have you done any kind of panic buying while the coronavirus has hit? You know, something to keep you entertained at home. I'd love to hear that. Um, and I'd love to hear what the first game you thought you should buy was, even if you didn't buy it or not, right? So that that moment of panic is like, we're going to be stuck inside the house for ages. I should get a copy of what came, what came to your mind. Um, what actually came to my mind was to get some kind of lighter games um, and that's just because I haven't been able to think a whole lot lately. My brain is, uh, is a bit frazzled or at least feels like in this horrible constant stress state and my brain doesn't want to work at all and I want to play board games but I just I can't play what I usually do. So I'm not used to going down this road, I don't normally play the lighter ones. So the goal of this month for me, I suppose, has really been to readjust what I, how I feel about my board game collection and what it can offer me at different times and depending on how I'm feeling. And I think that's why we picked up these smaller games to kind of round out the collection a bit. We had a good couple, um, but it was nice to just have a little something fresh, I guess, or something, something a bit different. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of where my focus has been um, this month. And I'll tell you a little bit more now about the games I've been playing. Right, so the games I've been playing this month. Um, and a lot of these actually, only a lot of these plays came later in the month. I spent half of this month going, why can't I handle playing games? You know, I want to play this and I couldn't. Or just having us take out games, set them up and then just be too tired to play them by the time they were set up. Um, and I just, I don't like that feeling. I don't like, it feels like I'm being disingenuous, um, you know, in the fact that I want to play a game, but then not actually being able to. It's, it's a rough spot. Um, so we chose to kind of focus on lighter things. 
So the first game that I've played a ridiculous amount of this month um, is Sakatsu, um, which I've mentioned earlier, the beautiful bird game. And this game really just captured my imagination a little bit. I think, I think there's just something quite mechanical about how you're placing things down and you have these beautiful tiles in your hand, these, they're, they're, they're fab. Um, that just kind of set you in a rhythm like where you're just thinking about the next thing and you don't have time to think about anything else. And it's the only thing I felt like the minute we played, I wanted to play again and again and again. Um, so much so that we like we were trying to get some time outside, we tried to play a game out in the garden, um, I played a game of it in bed, and this is one of the... Yeah, I haven't felt this way about a game in forevers. Um, and I know forevers isn't a word, but I like saying it. <laughs> um, and it's just... You know what? That's just a warm feeling, isn't it? When the game that you just you can't stop playing or you can't stop thinking about, um, and so it's been a real bright spot here and my most played game. And for sure, it's a small game, but I don't care. Absolutely don't care. Games are games, um, and I don't care if I played that a hundred times and you know, um, people don't want to count it as as a real game. It's a it's a real game, and I'm quite happy with it. And I think as long as games bring you comfort, who really cares what type of games they are? Um, so the second game that I'm going to talk about is Peat Mats because this also, they all came together. It's not Tiny Town Sakatsu and Peat Mats all came on the same day and we played them all in the same day, which is really nice. But um, there's something about the way Peat Mats is put together. It's just, it's kind of fascinating. And it always makes me feel like if I play this again, I could do better. I could improve upon what I did last time. It's a fairly simple concept, but it's I've never seen anything quite like it. I love this kind of cue system where you're trying to make your numbers work in such a way while also checking, you know, what type of birds you've got, what type of birds your opponent has, you know, is it worth giving up in a particular colour because your opponent has so many? Um, there's a there's lots of things going on, but none of it is taxing. That's the nice thing. It's all it's very pleasant and of course it's fun to look at birds. Um, you know, I've always had a thing for birds long before Wingspan came out. Um, so I just, there's something really kind of chilling and endearing about all of it actually. It's been really, really good. Um, the other game I've played a bit of this month and that I haven't played since Essen actually, um, is Las Vegas. So Las Vegas seems to be a, a relatively well-known dice game and it's pretty basic on the dice front. Like, if I'm honest, I shouldn't like this game at all. Um, and Las Vegas is a game where you roll dice. And then you're basically placing the pips of your dice out in specific locations um, and these locations have money attached to them and you want to get as much money as possible. And you're basically kind of like bidding with each other. Um, but you don't really get a say or you're, you're rolling dice each time you've got to place them out. So you don't really get to plan ahead and go, well, I'm going to put all my sixes on that spot. You just have to adjust to what you're dealt, right? You know, like Las Vegas. And I'm not a fan of dice chucking games. I never have been. I didn't like King of Tokyo. I, I probably can name some other dice chucking games, but not off the top of my head. And I just, I just usually I, they're just a bit random um, and not particularly fun. But I've no idea why this one doesn't feel like that. I, I actually can't fathom why I like this as much as I do. Um, and more importantly, I am undefeated, which is really, really funny. Um, I just seem to be good at putting or deciding where to place my dice to get the, the most money. And it's one I would really, really recommend. I think it's the kind of game you could play with anybody and you could play a lot of back and forth. And for some reason, um, for like seasoned gamers like myself and my husband, we still really liked it. And I think that's very surprising. Like I can't put my finger on why this game is good, but I would totally play it with you. Um, so that is Las Vegas. Um, another, um, I suppose, I'll, I'll round this out in the second game that I had a good couple of plays of this month, is Tris Magistus. Um, it's got a much more fuller title than that. Um, it's from Board and Dice Games. I hope I have that right, Card and Dice, Board and Dice. We'll pretend. I said this last time, actually, the last time we talked about Tris Magistus. Um, and this is a game about alchemy and making potions. Um, and essentially, if I broke it down, it's a game about getting the right symbols and then use those symbols to buy cards that give you victory points. Um, it's what it is. It's, a, it's, a, it's more elaborate than that, but that's that's what it's about. And when I played it the first time, it's, it's quite complex looking. I've heard a lot of people um, say it's difficult and things to learn. Um, I actually didn't find it too bad. Once we got going, you know, it was fine. And I quite enjoyed our first play. So I insisted we should we should play this again. 
And then it turned out I'd been playing a real wrong in the first game, and then I didn't like the game. <laughs> Have you ever played something incorrectly the first time, and then when you go to play it properly, you're like, this isn't as good as the original rule. And then what happened was, after getting annoyed about that, because I'd set up my entire game based around how this worked, you know, and um, then to suddenly have to swap halfway through the game just was crap. Um, and then of course I couldn't remember what the new rule was, what the real rule was, I kept reverting to my old heathen ways. Um, but, ugh, it's so annoying. But you know what, despite Trish Majestus not working the way I thought it would, it's still a very compelling game. I think there's something, there's something really cool about the mechanisms of going through it, because a lot of what you're doing is basically upgrading or transmuting symbols into other symbols, right? And there's a path along which they go. Um, so they go from one colour to this colour to this colour to this colour, right? So every time you want to get the end colour, you have to go through all these steps with your um, your previous ones. And there's something, I like. I just like it. I think that's really fun. And you can plan everything out. It's also quite timely as a game. Um, it's got only so many rounds you can play for. Um, I'm, I really like it too. I have to say, it's been, it's been super fun. I've not played it with more people because, you know, people aren't allowed in my house. Um, but I, yeah, I liked it. So I did play at least some heavier games this month and I'll put Trish Majestus forward for the, for that. So I want to know what you've been playing. Um, what's been your favourite? Have you had anything that really surprised you? Like, you know, games with birds really surprised me. I didn't, I'm, I did not anticipate that at all. I thought there would just be just fun little games and we just match numbers and we'd get bored. No, no, there's so much more going on there. Um, and I'm delighted by that. So I, I wanna hear what you guys have been playing and what you've been up to. So we'll finally round this out with uh, my current wish list, which is small and possibly insignificant and mostly impossible. Um, and what, I, what I'd really love to get my hands on would be a copy of the Joan of Arc game. Um, and this is a, it's a war game, There's, yeah, it's a war game and it's got all sorts of terrain and cool campaign things and I think the, the reason that this suddenly seems more important than other titles is the fact that I used to play war games a lot and every so often we'll sit and we'll reminisce about when we played war games and I'll, I'll miss it and we think about getting back into playing games like we used to play, you know, Warhammer Fantasy Battles and 40k and we did War Machine and things like that too and I think there's something really fun about kind of building your own army list and then going out and you know playing against each other on the table. Um, I've never been particularly good at these games although I managed to learn quite a bit of strategy. I think I just I played I played with good people but all of that kind of went out of our lives a year you know a couple of years ago now um, we sold everything on because we, we just weren't playing with it it just wasn't fun anymore. Um, but I do miss it and so we were trying to think if we could play a war game you know what would it be like and the truth is we want something with really good rules so you know that there's always an answer to a rules question we wanted a game that had units of guys not just individual skirmish units right so we wanted like groups of things um, and I wanted something where everything was already in the box that you wouldn't have to buy anymore because I did not want this to be a big money sink and sure enough, Joan of Arc seems to fit a lot of those boxes. Now the problem is, of course, it's a Kickstarter game, so it's ridiculously expensive because it's got all these miniatures and things. It's also in between Kickstarters right now, so I don't even know if I could get a copy if I wanted to. Um, but I just, I like the, I like the idea of it. I really do. Um, so if, if any of you actually play tabletop games, <laughs> tabletop games, <laughs> war games, of course you play tabletop games, otherwise why are you here? But if any of you are war gamers, um, let me know what do you play, uh, what do you like about it, um, and what kind of armies do you play. Um, I think there's more out there than I think there is, you know, I think I have a kind of a narrow reach, but I think it would be cool to have one war game just to take out for fun whenever I felt like it, you know, that kind of way, just to, ha just to have. So that's why Joan of Arc is on my wish list. So I would love to know what's on your wish list. Um, yeah, I'd like, there's been a whole stall in releases and things at the minute and there's an end to conventions and all sorts of stuff. So I wonder where the future of board games is going to go right now. I guess we'll all have to, to wait and see. Um, but yeah, let me, let me know what you've had your eye on. 
So I'll do the bit now where I just wrap up a little bit about the channel and I suppose a little bit about myself um, because I, I'd like to think that's why some of you are here. Um, but if you're not interested in the personal stuff, you can turn things off right this minute. Um, so the good news, I suppose, about this whole terrible outbreak, I can't like, it's been slightly positive for me and that's going to sound weird. Um, I'm sorry to everybody who's having a really hard time with it, but I, I kind of can't help myself. I'm normally a hermit. I... I don't normally leave the house much. I don't really go anywhere. Um, and my husband's now working from home, which has drastically changed the quality of my life. Um, everything's just easier for me when he's around. He doesn't have to be like on top of me or anything like that, but around the place helps a lot. And it just makes everything seem so much more possible. Um, I've gone, been able to go for loads of walks and things like that. We've got a really nice, you know, kind of riverside area right near where we live. Um, and it's just, in general, having him here has just, oh, it's like a gift, I'm not going to lie, it's an absolute gift and I'm going to be torn to shreds when he has to go back to work for real. Um, but for now I'm trying to make the most of a really terrible situation. Um, the other good thing is I managed to empty our shelf of shame, I hate that phrase. Um, I have no unplayed games, is what I'll say. Finally got through everything um, and that's quite nice in itself actually. Um, I don't know, it didn't really bother me that much. I don't like having unplayed games sitting on my shelf though, um, which kind of contradicts what I previously said, but I just, I hate this idea of, I've bought this thing, but I cared about it so little I didn't even play with it when I got it. You know what I mean? It just seems like you didn't, you, you, were, you weren't bothered in the first place. That's just, that's just how I feel about it. So usually when we get something, I'll be certain to unwrap it and play it straight away and then forget about it as necessary. Um, but it's been nice to have kind of none of that stuff there. Um, I've also been rearranging the furniture. You may have noticed, ooh, yeah, ever so slightly. Um, just because I'm trying to fit my lights in more. And also I find when I can't change things inside myself, I change things around me. Um, I, I like changing furniture around. So hopefully this new setup looks okay. This is kind of the first time taking it for a spin. Um, and yeah, it's just, oh, this month has just been so bloody stressful. Um, and I'm sure there's loads of you out there who feel the same way with me. Um, I think it's the uncertainty of everything that makes it so, so terrifying. Just because, you know, how are things going to be in a month or so? Um, I'm sure there's lots of you that have had your jobs affected, your families affected. Um, it's, it's a really difficult time. And I think it's amazing, by the way, how much the board game community has come together to create great things, to have giveaways to try and make people's life e life easier um and it's kind of something i'd love to be a part of but i just don't have the energy um i find it hard actually to watch everyone else step up and be amazing when times are terrible and not be able to do it yourself um but i'm i suppose i'm 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 still here i'm holding on with what i have i'm slowing a lot of stuff down including the channel i'm trying to take it break for a little bit that doesn't mean there won't be board game content and stuff I just I don't want to feel the pressure of well I need to have this made by next week um and that's going to be hard in itself I find it impossible to stop <laughs> I find it very very difficult so I'm trying I'm trying really hard on that front to just be a regular human being for a bit and just let myself cope with everything that's happening um but otherwise yeah things things are good um i hope you guys are all well i'm gonna check actually is there anything else i said i was gonna say on my list i don't know oh, yeah that is, most, that is most of my list the, the only thing i forgot to mention is that it's amazing the the quality of some of the smaller games um and yeah i've been harping on about both of these bird games but i'm sure there are tons of others and i would love to hear what your favorite small games are now by small I don't necessarily mean in size but usually there are the games that don't take too long to play and um, that have a fairly straightforward mechanism or tell you what you're doing you know there isn't a ton of choices to make but they're interesting ones too um and I'm just I'm blown away actually by how they're making me feel at the minute um which is I suppose you know what gaming really should be about how it makes you feel um because right now my regular games make me feel stupid <laughs> you know what I mean stuff I'm familiar with I just feel like an idiot um, and so it's very refreshing to play a different type of game than I'm used to, to feel kind of welcomed and feel okay. Um, and I, I really think if, if you too, like me, don't feel like playing games right now because it, it you know, the, everything's all over the place, probably including you, try play something different. Um, 
I think I think this is the joy of having a collection, being able to, to try out other things. Um, I don't feel that you have to be able to do something you normally could right now, though everything's nuts. Yeah, exactly. Everything's nuts. I think that's how I will end this episode. This has been the longest March ever. I still can't believe it's still March. Um, but yeah, so of course, take care of yourself, take care of your families, um, look after yourself. And if anybody needs anything, just reach out, say hi. I'm here. I'm not good at the peopling thing, but I'm, I'm here if anybody needs anybody. Um, and yeah, let's hear about your games. So until next time, um, I'll be here playing games, asking questions. I'm perusing my collection, which is now on a whole different wall. Hurrah. Take care, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.